Namaskar Nileshok, another session in the Dr. No Shorts series. This would be number 17. All right, what do we have got for today's session? We are going to look at how the grahas were named in Indian astronomy and their possible connections, okay? Conjectural connections, coincidental connections, but something very interesting and at least worth a thought, okay? And assuming that is true, meaning it's just not a pure coincidence, but there is something uh, well thought out or well thought through in making these connections between the different graha, different planets, then again, it supports in a corroborative fashion, the sophistication, uh, precision, accuracy of uh, Indian astronomy, also its deep antiquity, and also sophistication in terms of not only the ingenuity in how they develop these wonderful uh, mathematical relationships, comprehensions of what's happening with planetary system, the astronomy yuga, which by the way are confused for chronology purposes and that has created a chaos in as far as the Indian history is concerned. But the astronomy yuga, I mean, it's very ingenious, right? In terms of using that numbers like uh, Marathi, Lasavi, Masavi kind, you know, those who know what they are, like, you know, least common denominator and trying to find a number in such a way that the uh, error in the orbital period and mean orbital period, we are talking Madhyamadikar of these planets remains minimal or actually uh, immaterial. It's so small that it wouldn't matter for all the considerations, all astronomy related considerations, which means all agriculture related considerations, all uh, civilizational festival, related considerations, uh, all the navigation related considerations, and of course the additional applications that uh, developed in uh, Indian civilization related to uh, the astronomy connection with Ayurveda, astronomy connection with the Falajotis as in astrology, what we call today. So it's extremely fascinating journey. And again, we will see how ancient it is, okay? And how can we do this? Again, three things because we are lucky to have a extremely stable, sophisticated language. It's created and therefore it's created with keeping these things in mind that it needs to be stable. It needs to have a very low drift. It needs to be very sophisticated and therefore uh, capable of describing things. Okay, and also the low drift. And then the second aspect is the time. Astronomy is time. And therefore, the great sophistication that you see in uh, Indian astronomy. And these two are frankly great, but they are not that useful unless there were a very um, intelligent people who thought of making use of these two to write about our itihasa. Okay, so that's how we can actually discuss this. Um, now, what I'm going to uh, talk about today, you will see what's the connection of with the moon, moon, sun. But if you look at the top, it's moon and moon's sun. But as a mnemonics or in a simple way, you know, just like you would remember um, which uh, of the trigonometric functions are positive and in, in which quadrant, some of you would remember either this or some different way of remembering it, like all silver tea cups. That's how we walk through the four quadrants. Okay, so all are positive, then signs are positive, silver, tea, tans is positive, and cups, that's cosines are positive. Just in that fashion, uh, if you want to think of this today's uh, Dr. Short episodes, you may think of uh, simply in terms of a beautiful uh, Indian actress, Mun Mun Sen, Okay, one of my favorites, you can say. And uh, definitely, I mean, you know, you, you can have beauty and a brain, but just brain is also fine and just beauty is also equally fine. And definitely, uh, I, I'm not in the position to comment about uh, 
Moon Moon Senji, but the beauty, absolutely, you know, uh, very beautiful. And uh, this is definitely in contrast to the extremely, uh, as, as people would say, you know, between uh, intellect and idiocy, there is a thin line. Okay, similarly, between a beauty and a vulgarity, it's an extremely thin line. And, you know, uh, just remember to boycott uh, Patan. Okay, this is a scene from that uh, uh, vulgar scene from Patan. Anyways, but let's get back to the good times. Okay, Munmun Sen with her two daughters and a number of you would have seen her in uh, other movies before. But we are what we are going to talk about is we are going to talk today about the moon and moon's sun. Okay, but if you bring this together just from a mnemonics perspective, Moon Moon Sen or say it Moon Moon Sun or Moon and Moon's Sun. How about that? All right. That's how as humorous as I can get by the way, guys. Okay. If you look at these two pictures, what do you see? I mean, if I ask you, and now that I have already mentioned the subject that it's about moon and moon's sun. I mean, some of you who may know something may start saying, okay, I know what this is. But in a very objective fashion, without a priori biases, if I ask you, we'll show you these two pictures and say, tell me what, what, who are these or what are these two planets? Of course, I gave you a lot of background, you know, the moon, moon, sun, and moon and moon's sun. So some of you should able to should be able to make good guesses. Well, let me give you the answer. Okay. If I turn this question and say, which one of these two is actually the moon? And I have done this. Okay. I have done this in the classrooms here in the elementary school, but also the middle schools. And, you know, they both say I'm trying to uh, most most of the people would say, unless they are into somewhat visual astronomy or, uh, you know, they, are, they have astronomy catalogs at their home, they would say, well, it's moon, we know that, and you're just showing two different uh, pictures of moon. Well, actually not. The one on the left is Mercury, and one on the right is our moon, the Earth's moon. Now, more than just the visual pictures, actually they have a lot of similarity. Well, the way I have shown the pictures, they almost look equal. In reality, the Mercury, the one on the left side, is slightly bigger than our moon. By our moon, I mean the Earth's moon, okay? Now, do you know what Mercury is called? Of course, it's known by the name as Buddha, okay, in the Indian astronomy for a very long time. Okay, we just don't know, guys, how long this knowledge exists. We can tell definitely it exists more than 7,500 years ago. That is the timing of Mahabharata. We can say definitely it exists more than 14,000 years ago. That's the timing of Ramayana. And there are many other texts. And if the text can be dated, we can say this, but it's not such a big deal. Okay, because a, a human being under the sky okay, watching things for a long time, and that was the only television that was available then, if you think of it, then very fast people would start noticing these things, okay? So not a surprise. Considering this, it's very amazing how late uh, places like uh, Europe, you know, came uh, in contact with this or became aware or thought of studying this uh, deeply. That's not a subject today either, so let me jump into uh, the comparison of Mercury and Moon, other than their visual uh, visual appearance. And keep this in mind, by the way. Whereas we can observe the Moon uh, with naked eyes, okay, or with some sort of magnification, you know, even putting a drop of water in your eyes or putting a drop of oil. Now, don't do it, but people who are experts may actually do it. They have done it to increase the magnifications. We don't need to do it anymore. A simple set of binoculars would do a great job and telescopes. But again, you know, this also connects us with the sophistication, but the telescopic, or actually not just ordinary telescopic, but very superior telescopic abilities of ancient Indian astronomers. And by ancient, I'm talking of um, not the very uh, devious and idiotic Western timelines of 
a universe beginning in 4004 BC. No, I'm talking of a evidence-based, multidisciplinary evidence-based evidence for Indian civilization that takes us to thousands and thousands of years in antiquity. We just don't know exactly when uh, we had various abilities, but there is enough reason now uh, based on the evidence to say that, oh yeah, I don't know how they did it, but we had, a, we meaning ancient Indian astronomers had extremely sophisticated telescopic abilities. Today we'll briefly talk about this. So besides just the visual feel of this, there are many similarities between these two planets. And therefore, by the way, as I said, moon is very easy to observe, the Earth's moon. The Mercury is not that easy to observe. I mean, of course, with the naked eyes, we can see the Mercury, but noticing its surface. As far as the Western Europe is concerned, they didn't do it until Galileo. They could not do it. They did not do it. They were incapable of doing it until the time of Galileo, although they were observing Mercury, of course. And the Greeks, they were not sure whether Mercury is one planet or two different planets because we have done a lot of episodes on Mercury. Uh, after sunset, Mercury, you can only see for a fleeting time interval just after sunset, if everything is in the right proportion, enough separation from the sun and so on, or you can see Mercury just before sunrise. So when the Greeks were seeing it before sunrise and they were also seeing some planet, bright planet after sunset for a long time, and we are talking the times of only 2,500 years ago, guys. And they were for a long time thinking these are two different planets. Keep this in mind in the context of many Indic researchers, both on you know, the West and the East and mixed and of different camps, pro or anti-India camps, you know, saying that, Greeks gave us astronomy, okay? It's a joke, you may laugh at it, okay? But let's go further. What are additional similarities between these two planets? And again, keep the telescopic ability in the back of your mind because the way we are seeing this on the left side, Mercury, was as far as the Western Europe is concerned, it was not possible until Galileo, okay? In that context, I'm going to share some of this information. Just quickly, other than the visual, visual appearance, look at some of the similarities. Now, granted, there are, of course, differences. There will always be differences, okay? But look at the similarities. Both of these planets, and when I say planets, I mean the moon, Earth's moon, and Mercury. Uh, if you look at their atmosphere, now what we know from modern day uh, astronomy knowledge, they are airless, and both of them have thin atmospheres. There is a specific word for that, like exospheres or something like this. Very thin atmosphere, practically airless, okay? Uh, the surface of Mercury, so the left, left side is Mercury, the right side is Moon. The surface is rocky and full of craters. Guess what? Many of you would actually know this. The surface of the Moon, Earth's Moon, is rocky and also full of craters. Um, now, the evidence tells us that there are what you see, those craters, but some additional structures, uh, not craters, I mean, but additional structures, uh, you know, and then uh, uh, cracks there, you know, crevices and all that you see on Mercury. These are volcanic structures on the surface. This is kind of conjectural in nature, so keep that in mind. Uh, ditto for the moon, volcanic structures on the surface, okay? Again, somewhat conjectural, okay? But we have a lot better idea when it comes to the moon in comparison to Mercury. Even today, we are not so sure about whether these are volcanic structures, 100%, we are not sure. Uh, there is more and more evidence coming up in terms of similarities. Again, the evidence of ice at magnetic poles of Mercury, guess what? evidence of ice at magnetic poles of uh, moon, okay? More and more evidence is showing for both of them. Uh, now, the mercury crust, very interesting. And that's why if you look at the surface, they look somewhat similar, shiny and whatnot. Partly, it is because of this similarity that the crust contains large amount of silicon and oxygens. There are specific names for it, but we'll not go into that. Uh, it's not just coming to me right now. Okay, very similar, some differences, but also the moon has crust that contain large amount of silicone and oxygen. 
And essentially because of it, uh, both of them have reflective surface. Now, of course, we get light from all the planets, but relatively speaking, or as a comparison, you'll find Mercury and Moon in terms of their, uh, their being reflective or having a reflective surface are much closer to each other than the other comets. As I said, there are uh, going to be differences. Others, I don't want to focus on that because the point I want to emphasize is actually the similarity. And therefore, not surprising, surprising at all. And I thought uh, when I'm discussing Mahabharata evidence, I do not get the luxury of actually going through and discussing so many nuances. So I thought I'll just make a quick uh, note here. Uh, and these days in the vlog fashion, a quick Dr. No Shorts is to uh, tell you that think of these similarities, think of their similar appearance, okay, as seen from the earth. Now remember, you have to have a telescopic ability to notice the similarity between the Mercury and the Moon. Because whereas the Moon is not that difficult to observe, not so with Mercury, especially the kind of features that I just described to you. Now, in this context, uh, let's go, I mean, this is well known in Indian astronomy, but let's go to two references from the Mahabharata text and now it has been decisively shown that all the evidence points to 7,583 years ago when this was actually the historical events, the Aetiasic events happened, of course, composed some 17, 18 years after that. There were some addi additions made to it uh, over the next 100 years. So we are looking at 5561 BC to let's call it um, 5461 BC, okay, or 5480 BC, something like this. Interestingly, uh, besides the planet, the Mercury, being called as a Buddha in multiple places, we have about eight specific references to Mercury in the Mahabharata text. And all of them, by the way, point to 5561 BC. But what is interesting is in, besides uh, it's being called as Buddha, in two places it is called with the name which translated means son of the moon or moon's sun. Okay, and that's where that I talked about, it may be helpful to remember that as a moon, moon, sen, and you know, moon and moon's sun. Uh, one place in Karnaparva, uh, when Mercury is described after uh, sunset on scene in on the western horizon uh, that is uh, Somas Seputro, okay, and it was rising in an abnormal weird fashion. Why? Because it was rising against the western horizon and usually the things are rising from the eastern horizon, you know, again. So anyways, Somas Seputro Abhidayatiriya, Somas Seputra, okay, son of Soma, son of the moon, that's how it is described. And uh, in Shalya Parva, again, we get uh, a reference to three planets, actually all three of them described as son of somebody. Okay, so someday when I get chance, uh, I will try my best, no, no promises, no guarantees, guys, to see if I can talk about Brugu Sunu. Now, in, in English, the word son, that literally comes from Sanskrit, Brugu Sunu, son of Brugu. Dara Putro, Putra of a Dara, okay, son of Dara, son of Earth. So who is Brugu Sunu? That's Venus, son of Brugu. Who is Dara Putro? Putra of a Dara or son of Dara is uh, Mars. And Shashi Jena, again that Jena, the, where the word genetics comes from, by the way, genealogy comes from. Okay, surprise, surprise. By the way, this is, I mean, go and look at the etymology. Don't go running to um, uh, Sanskrit Vyakrana, Vyakaranis, okay? I mean, there are few good ones, but there are few totally confused ones, okay? So <laughs> because of their a priori bias or a priori confusion and all the shadripus, you know, they will send you on the wrong track. It says, no, no that cannot be the case. Brugu Suno, Dara Putro, Shashi Jena, in all three cases, it's a son of a Brugu, son of a Dara, and son of Shashi. Three different words used, Sunu, Sunu, as in son, so now let the uh, the 
Pi or the Proto-Indo-European idiots not tell you that from the sun in sun in English, Sunu came in Sanskrit, or sun in some uh, some relevant similar word in Proto-Indo-European nonsense. Okay, the the pie shape you can say. <laughs> Let no one tell you that. So be very careful who you approach for knowledge. Okay, not the pie uh, makers and not the. Uh, uh, run of the mill uh, Sanskrit Vyakaranist either. Okay. But you can actually use online uh, Sanskrit dictionary, but you can go to etymology of each of these words and you'll be surprised. So, again, uh, Somasya Putra. Uh, so, Putra they use. Now, in this case, Shashi. Shashi means also the moon. So, Shashi Jena, son of a Shashi, Dara Putra. So, again, two instances in the Mahabharata text where Buddha is described as the son of the moon. And guess what? This was a knowledge that was well known. I mean, this kind of relationship was formed, created. We don't know how. Therefore, I said it can be coincidental or it can be based on repeated and a long-term and telescopic observations of the moon and also of Mercury. Okay. So very important uh, to just remember this, that there is a lot that I can say about it, but I will stop on this. Uh, so moon, moon, sun, or moon and moon's sun. And uh, if somebody asks you who is Mercury or what is another name of Mercury, you can always say either Somaputra or Shashi Jaina. Okay, so those are the names of Mercury. And it could be coincidental or it could be very much based on a long-term uh, detailed telescopic abilities of ancient Indian astronomers. Now, is this just a one random coincidence or do we have some additional information about other names such as say Bhrugusuno or Dharaputro or Saturn is marked, Saturn is called uh, Ravi Putra. Okay, Nila Anjana Samabhasa Ravi Putram Yama Grajam and a brother of a Yama. Now, why is that, uh, why Saturn is said as Ravi Putra? I do not know. And therefore, I'm mentioning it because, you know, immediately, like when people see this, they say, okay, now Nilesh Ji, please explain Bhrugusuna and please explain the Raputra. Guys, I am doing whatever I can. I'm doing my Swadharma. If you feel curious, okay, watch my other sessions where I have said the Jidnyasa, the Kutuhal is fine, but it has to turn into Jidnyasa. It has to go to Prayojana. It has to go beyond Prayojana to Saprayojana, trying to find those problems which have a great potential to tell us much more, to give us many more insights if we solve them. So just because you want to know something, asking somebody else is not the correct thing, okay? So if you are curious about something, like say, why Bhrugusuno, why Dharaputra, why Saturn is uh, known as Ravi Putra or brother of a Yama? I mean, these are all open questions, guys. I just happen to... Um, Think about this, and I thought I'll just share whatever little I found out. Hope you enjoy this. I'll see you shortly in another session of Dr. No Shorts or Shraddha and Pradnya or in Marathi uh, Upasana and Abhyas. Okay, Namaskar.